Welcome to Boys Episode 144. We're here at the Speakeasy. We have a special, special show tonight. It's a bit of a treat. It's a, it's a treat for us. Yeah. Hopefully it will be a treat for you, young listener. We, uh... Or old listener. Or we might have some old folks listening. We run the gamut. My parents listen, so they're old. I wonder what our oldest listener is. And I don't mean that, you know, in, a, in an asshole, judgmental, right. terrible, ageist sort of way. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious. The oldest person that listens to boys. And let's just say the youngest. My father's 69, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I wonder what the youngest is. Probably like 10, 12. <laughs> no, I, I, I hope not. I know there's a, li- they, they, they like our stuff and comment a lot. And I think they're like 13. Is podcasting a young person's thing? I think it is now. I think uh, with like your is there a, is there a, a Venn diagram or maybe a, a correlation between YouTubers and podcasters? I don't know. I think YouTube might be kind of more where it's happening. Right. Podcasting to me seems skewed a little bit older. Yeah. Not a lot. Not a lot. Well, it seems like anytime you watch one, like I just watched the Joe Rogan one with Donnell Rawlings and halfway through it, as Joe Rogan always does, he convinces him to start a podcast. And then the next day he does. Yeah. So I think it's it's definitely like a, I'm going to say the median age of podcasters are like 40. Yeah. <laughs> I would say 30s, 40s, And the median age there. of podcast listeners is 20 to like 35. Yeah. I think that part of getting into a podcast is when you get a job you hate mm-hmm. or you're driving to a job you hate <laughs> or you're quitting a job you hate. You mm-hmm. need something to listen to on the way home sure. or on the way to the unemployment office. I know I started listening to podcasts, not at a job I hated, but at a job that was very boring. Drony job where you can just put on headphones and be like, fuck today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of mm-hmm. fuck today, we're not going to fuck today. We're happy about today. That is great. The speakeasy 51st mm-hmm. street speakeasy kindly open their doors to us and we're recording this episode tonight here so it might sound a little different it might mm-hmm. have a little different vibe different mood different acoustics but you know what that's a i think it's a little breath of fresh air i think so too you it know? feels good to you know as much as i love the boys uh studio mm-hmm. this is kind of nice it's different i'm actually in a way more comfortable chair yeah like i'm just kicked back i'm relaxed i got the mic in my lap yeah i'm feeling good i'm feeling calm i had a really really just one of those days, man. Just one of those days. Well, I was gonna, it's just one of those days. How many songs have that in it? <laughs> a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> Apparently, it's just one of those days for a lot of people. Whether you're... Who's the first one? Well, it's just one of those days that a girl goes Adina through. Adina Howard? Who who sings that? Is that it? I don't know. I don't that remember. That could be it. When I'm angry inside. Whether it's Adina Howard, Fred Durst, or anyone in between. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those days, man. Not a, not a terrible day. Mm-hmm. Just had a day... A lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, but man, it feels so good to be here chatting with you now. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, thank you so much, Speakeasy, for opening your doors to us. It's really cool. We kind of, kind of flew, I was, I was flew by the night. Is that a term? We flew by the night tonight? We flew flew by the seat of our pants. Today just kind of just happened and opened up for us. Like a, like God's benevolent grace just opened up and showed us its its beauty yeah and we're gonna get right to the show yeah but first some advertisements boyspodcast.com it's a hub of all things boys there you will find links to our facebook instagram twitter as well as a golden donate button you can click that button send us a few bucks if you like the show if you listen week after week if we help you get through a boring work day if we help you alleviate stress if we're there for you Be there for us. Shoot us a few bucks as a way of saying thanks. Helps keep the lights on. Helps keep the conversation flowing. That's boyspodcast.com. Boys is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube. You've heard me say it a million times. I'm going to say it a million and once time. We're available everywhere. Podcasts are available except... Except... Slight caveat. Spotify. I don't know what it is. Uh, apparently you just, it's, it's a hard club to get into. It it's is. a little bit like the Illuminati, like we spoke on the previous episode. Illuma spotty. Illuma spotty. Yep. But elsewhere, we're there. Leave a review on iTunes. Uh, I, I want to see boys, not on the top of the charts, but maybe give us an Oneeders Wonders, like 99th yeah. in the podcast charts. It'd be great. Dude, it would be a proud day mm-hmm. if we could just break into the top 4,000. That'd be awesome. You know, I yeah. mean, just, <gasps> we're on the yeah, we're at the bottom, but we're on we're the there. List. We're there. 
and then uh, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, if you go to YouTube, we're trying to grow our YouTube listenership, our subscriptions mm-hmm. there. Uh, some great things happen as you get more subscribers on YouTube. So just search Boys Podcast Oklahoma in YouTube mm-hmm. and you'll see an app. Click that joker. Go subscribe. It would mean the world to us. Also, you can email us boys at boyspodcast.com. Send us some feedback on the show, perhaps a question, amusing, an observation. Put your physical address in the email and we'll send you out some free stickers. We'd really appreciate that. Those stickers are going fast. There, we only have a few thousand we, left. Well, no, a few left. We, we printed up a limited run of these special stickies and they're, they're just on the stacks. Just listen, listen, they're premium. They're premium. so good. The premium. Oh, the, I knew the, it. I, I, I led you right I know you were it. right. Well, you kissed your butthole finger, and it's like, <laughs> that's so Trump. Thanks to the sponsors, Anthem Brewing. Anthem Brewing is sponsoring this show tonight. I got a literal bucket of beer standing it's, in front of me. It's really a beautiful thing. I might take a photo of it and share it on the boys' Instagram. It's a bucket of beers. Yeah. It's a nice It's a nice array of delicious, delicious beers from Anthem Brewing. I walked to the tap room today. There's a new gentleman behind the bar. It's a lovely young man. Uh, go in there and go, go into the tap house. Get yourself a, a, a brew. And tell them the boy sent you. Tell them the boy sent you. Fat Bison, fatbison.com, creator. Amazing wooden signs and rarities. Oddities. Oddities. Rarities. rarities. All of it. Champion Vintage. She just posted up some boots today. I get saw yourself that. a nice pair of boots to get into closing them out. Get them out of here. Well, it's almost summertime. Yeah. You got to get the boots. So you get the boots. You get mm-hmm. the used boots. Mm-hmm. You get the your favorite used boots. You put them in the closet. So you're trumping. You're, you, <laughs> you guys, my favorite used boots. I'm a boot man. I couldn't see Trump in boots. Do you think boot? Do you, Tr- you think Trump listens to scat? Was he a big fan of scat man? <sighs> I was like, I'm a scat man. Oh, God. Uh, no, I hope not. Championvintage.com. He's he more to, of a piss guy. Uh, he is a piss guy. Mm-hmm. Can you piss in boots? Not puss in boots, piss in boots. Right. Yeah. Uh, Champion Vintage OKC on Instagram. Check out all the stuff they have. Uh, and the 51st Street Speakeasy. Let's yeah. just shout it out to One them. One more time. Thank you, fellas, so much. Great bar. 1114 Northwest 51st Street in Oklahoma City. Stop on by. Again, just tell them boy sent you. Just everywhere you go, just proclaim, boy sent me here. <laughs> Wherever it is. Yeah. Whether they uh, uh, help out the podcast or not, just, boy sent me here. Do it. Go go into a Catholic church and that's, just yell that, that out. I was going to say, that's what Kevin Spacey is doing now. Boy, boy when he walks into prison, boy sent me here. Dude, there's been a lot of that going on lately. Dude, the it's, proverbial shit is hitting the proverbial fan. An Oklahoma missionary just fucking got... Caught diddling kids in Kenya. What the fuck, dude? Okay, can I be honest? Yeah, we'll wrap we'll wrap this up and get to yeah, the show yeah. here here shortly. But you know, I'm a weirdo. Mm-hmm. I'm a pervert. Yeah, I'm an asshole. Sure, I'm a I'm a lot of things. I'm a, I'm also a good person. I'm also a normal person. I'm also a reasonable person. You describe a human being. Yeah, a little bit of both. Uh-huh. A little bit of this. A little bit of that. A little bit of Monica. A little bit of Sandra. A little bit of Bernice. <laughs> a little bit of Gertrude. A little bit of Esther. A little bit of Bettina. That was our that was our game. Ever since we talked about Mambo Number no. Five, we we were remixing the song, but putting in old lady names. Yeah, and I, the, the the list of old lady names isn't super long. No, but you can make some up, and they they work. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I love Bethesda. That mm-hmm. might be my favorite. Bethesda? That just sounds so biblical. A bit, of, little bit of Twyla. Twi- oh, sun. that's a good one. That's 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 a new one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I might be a lot of things, but I am not a pedophile. No. I'm not a pedophile. I don't get the appeal, whether, wh- whichever way you swing, mm-hmm. you can like boys, you can like girls, you can like both. I don't get liking the young, though. No. Kids are stupid. And yeah. they're, I'm going to go on record here. Children are not sexy. No. <laughs> There's nothing sexual about a child. I can see, you know, like a, like a sexy woman. Yeah. Like, like a woman that just exudes sexiness and mm-hmm. you're like, I'd like to get into those pants. Yeah. A woman with a bank account, a woman with a 401k, a yeah. woman with a little bit of like, she's been around, she's seen some things. Yeah. Some of that worldly knowledge. Yeah. And tits. I could see a sexy, <laughs> I could see a sexy man. I could see, you know. Right. Like all those, oh man, it's all those sexy men out there. I can see the appeal. So many sexy men. I can see the appeal. But a child? No. Like. That's a severe mental illness. And I don't mean that in a way like we should have pity on people like that. No. I and just, they're trying to. They're trying to be like, well, let's make these uh, sex dolls that look like kids for these pedophiles so they don't go out and rape kids. You're just 
you're you're uh, you're work, enabling. You're enabling. Yeah, it's you're too, catering to. You're, yeah, you're catering to their not illness. Fucking lock them up. Chop their dicks off. Yeah, that's forced. I was about to say forced circumcision. I Castration. Am, yeah, I'm the opposite of a pedophile. I like old ladies. I like old ladies. You like man. Bethesdas and Dude, Gertrude's. Helen Mirren. To the, I'm telling you, man. It's at, she's like 80, but it's fucking hot. I love it. Well. That's, is that going to be a thing? They're too old. What are you doing? You know what I mean? I guess if you geriatrics, work, that's going to be the yeah, next thing. Yeah. Jerry files. I'm a Jerry Jer- Jerry file. I guess if you worked at a nursing home, there might be a problem. Oh yeah. That's fucked up. But yeah, it's, I don't know. It's crazy to me. I keep seeing these things in the news. Mm-hmm. My friend, the world has gone mad. It's gone mad. And I'm so glad and not sad mm-hmm. that I'm not a dad. Oh, well, kind of. I, don't know that's a nice little rhyme I, made there. i'm glad i'm glad i can see through the bullshit mm-hmm. and and i don't have any re- what i meant by saying i was an asshole blah 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 earlier is i'm not perfect mm-hmm. but i'm not a nut i'm not a nut you're not crazy no i'm not loco i'm just <laughs> not dude i'm yeah. i'm pretty reasonable i'm pretty normal anybody that knows me knows mm-hmm. that you know me i know you i'm glad that i'm normal i don't have like i'm not I don't have any sort of weird fetish or kink. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a perv, but I'm, I, I don't know, like nothing illegal, nothing creepy, nothing weird. I don't know, man. Yeah. It's a lot to think about. It is. Well, you start when, when things like this start coming to light and there's a lot of them, do you start thinking inside yourself like, Ooh, what's, what's my, everyone has a thing. What's my thing? Do I have it? I don't. Right. Or, or you start second guessing the things that you do like, like old, older women, you know, like maybe, I don't know, don't, don't shame me for liking, well, I don't know. It's societies, uh, I mean, they say it every fucking generation, but they're going to hell in a handbasket. I agree. And I love hell in a handbasket. She's a great lady. Uh-huh. She's one of those old ladies. A I little think. bit of Helena in uh, my that, life. That, that's a good one. To me, that's an old lady. Uh, Helena? Yeah. I also think if, if I could lump um, another mental deficiency in, mm-hmm. it's people who like things way too much. Dude. So Dude. I see it all the time. Mm-hmm. I like a lot of things and I, 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 I get into phases. I, I like things. I get really into it. I go down the rabbit hole. I read up on things. I enjoy things. That list of things is always changing, evolving, maybe circling back around. Mm-hmm. But it's like when you see an SUV that has like Doctor Who stuff plastered all over it. All over it. But it's, but it's, it's not even like artistic it's all just plain white vinyl decal yeah or or you know it's like a a tardis blue suburban <laughs> jacked up and then it's got like the family of tardises or tardises <sighs> tardi <laughs> tardi who and, or and then it's got like you know the the license plate that says like you know tardis what's yeah. a is there a doctor who number i don't know i don't watch the program i have no idea i have no reference then you have a bumper sticker that says mm-hmm. my other car is a tardis right you got a or little TARDIS du- hanging from the rearview mirror. Or the dudes that have the Jeep Wranglers that they turn into like Jurassic Park Jeeps. Like, do you really like it that much right. that you're going to pump another, I'm going to assume like 10 G's into making your car look? You're just buying knickknacks and trinkets and yeah. accoutrement, as you say. Yeah. I saw one that was, I was telling my wife about it the other day because she brought up like the Florida Panthers, which is like a... Uh, I don't know if they're still a hockey team. They were a hockey team back in the day. But as, and I was like, oh, I remember I drove behind this truck that was like Florida Panther purple. I think you, me and you were in the car together with it. And the back windshield was the giant Florida Panther, like yeah. that, that like argh, jumping out of your panther. Yeah, like the, the, the leaping panther. And you see that kind of shit all the time with sports memorabilia. But the big one, the biggest one has to be goddamn Batman fans. And yeah. You go, it's either all Batman or all fucking Joker. And I think you hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. That might be the worst. All Joker? Joker. Mm -hmm. Whether it's old Joker, whether it's Heath Ledger Joker. Which is the big one. You see that one a lot. Why so serious? Yeah. Uh. You see a lot of Jokers, man. And Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Like a a purple SUV (laughs) with like a decal of the Joker's grin on the back. Yeah. And then... Maybe across the back of the tailgate, it's spray painted or not spray painted, airbrushed 
the Joker's Lament. Oh boy. You know, you name your car. Yeah, or it has like ha 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 That's on the hood. It. Oh boy. Yeah, ha, ha. And then maybe like a little nod to Harley Quinn. Man, I don't fucking I don't understand it. I have I've you, never I've never lo- I love a lot yeah, of things, but that, I've never loved something so mm-hmm. much. I mean, I, when you're a, a teenager, of course, you just you splather your back window and band stickers. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I never put them on the bumper. No, mine were always decals on the window. On and the I window. never. You know what? I've I, I have one sticker on my car right now. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time in my entire existence of driving my entire career of driving that I've that I put a vinyl sticker on the paint. And it's only because I drive a hatchback now and there was a nice little spot for it. Mm-hmm. But I've never put a sticker on a bumper mm-hmm. and I've only once put a sticker on paint. I put a sticker on paint too. And I think we have the same sticker on paint. Mine was because someone backed into my fucking bumper and left a fucking scratch. And I was like, well, instead of covering up, I'll slap a fucking nice little sticker over it. Did you do that thing where you lick your thumb and get all the road dirt yep, off your car? Get all that off yeah. and then you put them nice and smooth. And then, But then it looks like a reverse bruise because your car's dirty <laughs> right? and there's like a <laughs> thumb swipe. Why is this so clean? What yeah. do you do? Well, because I don't want any dirt between okay. my sticker and the car. Here's how rarely I put decals on my car. I have one other thing on my car and it's the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Thumb. Mm-hmm. Huge Hitchhiker's Guide fan. But you didn't I, plaster. No, I put it on a window. So I drive a, a Velocitor and it's basically a, a three door car and there's a back window. It's really small. Like imagine like a hatchback that has like a really tiny window in the back. Mm-hmm. It's like that's a perfect little window to put this decal on. And I slap it on and wouldn't you fucking know it. It's on upside down. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and, it's, and I was like, do I take it off or just leave it? I fucking left it. Is that like flying the American flag upside down? Like, it is. is it a hate? Is it like inverting the cross? Yeah, like fuck you. Yeah, thumbs down. Thumbs down. Oh and I have gosh. the Hitchhiker's Guide logo. It might be just it's cocked in a very weird way. Mm-hmm. I uh man, I have something kind of embarrassing to admit. Mm-hmm. Uh, on our last episode, I I believe that I exclaimed that I liked Limp Bizkit. You love Limp Bizkit. I do, man. I, I can't help it. They're, yeah. Of course they're cheesy. Of course Fred Durst comes off as a huge douche. Speaking of going too far with loving something too much, uh-huh. that Wes Borland, he really loves wearing costumes. He, Maybe a little too much. That's his thing, man. That's they're always thing. different costumes. They are different. Um, yeah, I did exclaim that on the last episode. I do stand by it. Because of Wes Borland, I just enjoy the fella. Mm-hmm. I like his guitar playing. I like his costumes. I like his art. Mm-hmm. I like his sense of humor. I follow him on Instagram. I think he's a funny dude. Yeah. And he's a good guitar player. Just he, he, happens to be in a band. He played in a project with uh, Matt Skiba from McElroy Trio. He did? Yeah, uh, The Secrets. He played guitar in The Secrets. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. So you're schooling me on my own, on my own band. There you go. Um, when I was in high school, I got my first car. And it was a 1992 Dodge Sundance. Now, you've never heard of this car because they only made like three of them. But you've seen it. I think the Sundance is one of those cars that multiple uh, car manufacturers made models that looked exactly like Mm -hmm. it, like a Dodge Dynasty. Right. I believe Dodge, Pontiac, and Chevy all made this exact same car, but they were called different things. Mm -hmm. Like my sister had a a Sunfire. Yeah. That was a Chevy. And I think Pontiac made the Sunbird. The Sunbird. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I had a friend whose parents owned a vinyl sticker or a vinyl cutting company, I should say. They made vinyl decals. They made signs. They made vinyl things that right. were laser etched. And uh, I was hanging out at the shop one one day, one rainy summer day. And my friend was like, hey, man, do you want me to make you a vinyl decal for your car? Fuck yeah, dude. And I was like, hell yeah, I do. Now, Remember, I was probably 16, 17 at the time. Uh huh. So I get online. This is the early days of the internet. And I'm looking for the font because I wanted it to say something. Uh huh. I was like, I want something. I want a good font. What am I going to pick? Old English. Yep. Oh, yep. And uh, about four feet wide by about eight or nine inches tall uh-huh. in white vinyl. Mm hmm. I applied a decal, not on the bumper, not on the back windshield, front windshield, right across the top. 
And what did it say? Limp Biscuit. Dope. It was bad. <laughs> was it a four door Sundance? Was it the no? Sh- it was a two door. The champagne. It was champagne brown. Yeah. It was the color of a fart. Mm-hmm. It was two door. It was a little tiny car. I had a bitch and sound system in it, it though, yeah. as you do when you're young. You- it was that the one with the uh, the discman. No, I actually had. It was my first car. It was my second car. My first car with a Aftermarket. actual dash CD mm-hmm. player in it. Had some Pioneer six by nines in the back. Had some Pioneer door speakers in the front. Sounded really nice. But yeah, I uh, I did apply. On the front. You did like a Hernandez. Yeah, your classic like low rider approach. Yeah. It, it, but it was, it was, it literally spanned mm-hmm. the entire front windshield uh, up in the top. I applied it. I thought it was the coolest thing. I, I get in the car to drive home and it was raining. Mm-hmm. I flipped the windshield wipers on. And it just goes away. It just, <laughs> it just flicked it off the <laughs> so then it just said lip biscuit <laughs> like l the i the m half the p was gone yeah it, it looked like it said lick biscuit pretty much and i didn't really know how to take it off which mm-hmm. you know you could have just taken a razor blade to it and got rid of it but i left it on for about two weeks until one saturday morning i get up and my dad is in the driveway scraping that decal off my car and he was just like dude why did you do this? You're so in trouble. I guess it took him a week or so to, to, to get see it. it. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So embarrassing, though. <sighs> Limp biscuit Limp across your biscuit. windshield. I'm surprised you didn't get someone to like, like a, a what do they call the airbrush? Like the three dollar bills y'all cover on your hood. Oh, dude. One one step away. Mm-hmm. One step away. That that was that was the last time I ever had something that I love that much that I applied to something that I love that much yeah i don't i can't i can't even like do band t-shirts anymore like i'll buy them at shows and then i'll fold them up and put them in a drawer yeah it's like a little keepsake Mm -hmm. i've I've done that but before like i would everything a band had i would rock it i would rock a t-shirt and then put a hoodie over it maybe a jacket a fucking hat like the whole fucking thing like would you wear multiples i would do the whole thing like a belt maybe a belt belt buckle okay so we joked before about yes yes uh we joked before about um dudes or ladies who would do like you know the superman t-shirt with like a deadpool hat like they're just crossing genre or mm-hmm. crossing characters and like you know uh uh, I guess, uh, uh labels or, or i guess companies and do the whole thing i never really did it with bands a lot of people do that with bands they'll wear like a like travis barker was on the uh, joe rogan show and he had a slayer beanie and then I think he's wearing some uh, an ice cube t shirt. I'm like, that's so weird. Yeah, you can't you can't cross Don't genres. Cross bro. genre. Just go plain. What if you did like a Joker fedora, mm-hmm. maybe a Harley Quinn fidget spinner? I'm into that. All right. Yeah. Or like you know a Batman bucket hat, <laughs> and like I don't know like penguin suspenders. If that Batman bucket hat, it's got to be black fuzzy with. I want the yellow Batman yeah. logo. Yeah, yeah, not and and not this modern angular Batman shit. I want no, the classic, just that oval nanner Batman yeah, logo. I I actually speaking of, I did have a Batman bucket hat. I went to Six Flags over I Texas. Was gonna say, did you get a Six yep. Flags in a gift shop? I did. Uh, there was the Batman stunt show. It just premiered. Ooh. The summer that I went, mm-hmm. and of course I had my ass in the seat there, mm-hmm. and uh, my dad bought me a Batman bucket hat, and boy did I wear it! Did I wear it? But again, I was a child. Sure, I was like thirteen. Dude, I wore the. We all wore the dumbest. Have you ever looked at pictures of when you were a kid? And like, why did my parents let me walk out of the house? Nay, why did you put that on me? I didn't choose my clothes, and I was like nine. Right. Your mom laid clothes out and said, "This is what you're wearing." Well, I definitely had. The, an urban phase oh yeah i was probably in seventh grade eighth grade and i found a little company by the name of cross colors mm-hmm. i don't know if you're familiar i'm very familiar um made made popular by uh crisscross mm-hmm. uh will smith mm-hmm. um i believe tlc yeah, a lot of uh young tlc hoodie t-shirts yeah a lot of hooded t-shirts uh lots of mixed patterns mm-hmm. colors mm-hmm. Uh, i had a pair of i don't know if you'd call them jeans or shorts because they oh they're called jams jams yeah. okay yeah they yeah, were, they were jean, long shorts. yeah jean jams mm-hmm. wide long you know 
they rested probably halfway between the ankle and the knee. Mm -hmm. And they were um, like every panel of denim was a different striped pattern. So some like pinstripes, some wide stripes, and they were very urban. Yeah. I mean, they screamed 90s. They were, like, they were in, loud in, in living color. Right. Yeah. And boy, did I wear those with a hooded t-shirt. Ooh, I did that too. I was, that was my era of like, I guess, urban phases, but definitely cross colors, which is back by the way. It's in stores. People are, kids are eating it up. Cross colors was one of them. Um, I wasn't really big on Defubu, but I think like hyper color might've been that not like urban, but it was definitely in the more like hip hop. What's hyper color. I, I always thought hyper color was like for dudes whose dads own jet skis. <laughs> Like it was like extreme sports. Oh really? May, I could be wrong. I don't know. I had a I, limited. Yeah, I don't know. Like I think an oversized hooded T-shirt is like my big thing for like urban and jams and like purple for some reason. I had a pair of purple Reebok Classics. Okay. That I wore with a pair of purple dicky slacks oh god double purple double purple look like barney dude i looked like grimace because i was right. a chubby kid <laughs> i had uh some black in, in my urban phase i had some black fila high tops mm-hmm. that were all black with purple f's on the side and then a purple fila like logo on the bottom fuck yeah very Joker-esque. Oh, yeah. In fact, you know what? There was a, a again, with the Venn diagram, there was like a crossover urban slash Joker color scheme going oh, on. Yeah, yeah. A lot of purple and green. Purple greens, yeah. Like maybe some gold thrown in there, sure. some white. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It is. I, I'm looking back. Yeah, I had, I had a pretty good phase. Like I was listening to like, I think from the BMG music catalog, like a Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style. Mm-hmm. Onyx back to fuck up. Yeah. Coolio, it takes a thief. See, I, I, I liked the uh, Gangsta's Paradise and I, I liked the hits on Coolio. I never bought an album. There's some classic jams on that but one. But I re- I really loved Snoop Dogg Doggy Style. That album like changed I don't want to say changed my life, but it definitely like that was the uh iconic album for my urban phase era. Mm-hmm. There was that and Dr. Dre's Chronic. Those were like the two big ones. Mine was uh yeah, Doggy Style's throw in the mix there for sure, but mine was definitely Onyx Back to Fuck Up mm-hmm. and Cypress Hill Black Sunday. So you got a little more. That's I think Cypress Hill's a little more like goth rap. Well, like, so was like Onyx, dark. I think. Yeah, they were like darker. militant, like mm-hmm. they wore like the high tech boots and all black. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Onyx or not Onyx, excuse me, uh Cypress Hill definitely scary. was kind of sp- Spooky and yeah. scary. Spooky stoners. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm crazy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they literally yeah, insane. Insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they literally sung about being insane yeah. in, their, in their membranes. And then another song about taking hits from the bong. Oh, dude. And I, like, I never smoked pot back mm-hmm. then. I had no clue what they were talking about, but I was like, whoa, they're smoking that crazy stuff. Right. And I think Bone Thugs and Harmony was like right behind them with that. I think Bone Thugs was more... They were a bit darker of a of a of a group too. Well, Bone was weird though because they definitely were dark. I had um creeping on the come up on mm-hmm. cassette, and it was very dark. They had like a song called Mister Ouija. They mm-hmm. were like they would do these like incantations in their mm-hmm. songs and stuff. Very very dark. Mm-hmm. But then I feel like when Crossroads came out, like they totally flipped the script and were like christian see i don't know that crossroads video i would watch on the box uh-huh. when i was a kid and that video would kind of scare me because there's like that kind of buff angel going around with the terrible computer animated yeah, wings, yeah. really bad wings but he would go and like touch people and they would die and uh you know he he's just shooting dominoes with his uncle charles on a porch mm-hmm. uncle charles dies yeah and I turn miss black. my uncle Charles. Yeah, yeah I turned black. It's fucking creepy. Yeah. And then he takes them all to like this mountaintop or whatever. And, and isn't he holding a baby? Holding a fucking dead baby? Yeah. Like dark. That's real dark. It's real dark. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I, I, I always thought they were evil. But then, I don't know. I thought that they turned Christian. I think they, they performed on like one of the MTV award shows mm-hmm. and they were all in white. Uh, and I was like, oh. This is when they, they flip it. They're good now. They get everybody. Yeah. They get the Satanist gangsters. They get the Christians. mainstream that's Christians. How you, that's how you do it, man. Yeah. You got you to do a gospel record. Like everyone does like a, a little bit of a, something on a, on a gospel tip. I mean, even fucking like Johnny Cash did a gospel record when his first, all of his other records are about drinking and fucking and, you know, cheating on his wife and all yeah. that kind of shit. No, I, I love gospel though too. That, well, that's, that was kind of my plan growing up. It was like. I wanted to be in like a 
death metal band mm-hmm. and be like really evil. And then, but make sure before I die that I get saved. Oh, right before. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the, the, the head from corn. Get that golden ticket. Yeah. The, the fall into grace, you know? But see, I went the opposite route. Like I love Jesus and I found him. And uh, if you go by the rules, he can't take that back. Like I'm in. I you're good, dude. I signed the paperwork. I'm good. There's only a few things that could, you know, reverse reverse that. This podcast. <laughs> well, some of the things we've said here, yes, might reverse that. Uh, make null and void that contract. You ever you ever get real sick and then you're like, God, I still believe in you, just in case. Like, just, bro, bro, come on, buddy, buddy. <laughs> hey, old buddy, remember me? <laughs> I'm back. I led. I went. I had led a worship band. Yeah. Was, hey, I'm back. I'm back. Hey. I'm back. I got a bad cough and I'm back. <laughs> Just in case. I got a bad cough and I'm knocking on 40. I yeah, am back. Yeah. Hey, I'm back. The prodigal son has returned. Ah. I'm going to strap on the old cross colors and feelers for old time's sake. Oh. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's scary sometimes. It is. Yeah, the, the urban phase was short. I, I still appreciate hip hop. Actually, yesterday I was I was setting up my home studio and just kind of like, Tightening the screws, if you will. I was getting everything sounding good. Yeah. Ready. Got some got some monitors set up. Got my computer all updated. Got all my recording software updated. And I was actually listening to a just like random hip hop. I, I, st- I start, actually was playing some Cypress Hill. I was like, I want to test out these monitors. So I pulled up Spotify. I played a, a song off Black Sunday. I don't remember which one. Or maybe it was off their first album. And you know, on Spotify, if you play a song... Sometimes it will just start playing like random songs in that genre. It'll yeah. start like a like an artist radio. Yeah, if you go through like an album or whatever, it'll start playing stuff. Yeah, that's what I did. And, I, and like all day yesterday, when you walk down into my room, it was like I had my I had my like my nice lamp on. I had my room my my room my space was all clean. And you'd walk down, and it was like, oh, there's some Method Man. Oh, there's some Wu Tang. Oh, there's some Dr. Dre. It was really nice as you were coming like in and out of the room, like yeah. a nice little flow. Like, and I just left it real low. Yeah. So like you couldn't hear it in the next room, but you'd walk in as like, oh, damn, did I just step into a, the coolest club ever? Right. It's like some slow and low. They weren't slow jams. Right. See, I, I've always, have you ever gone like a, like a, we've all gone to like house gatherings, like get togethers or it's like a meal and, or someone brings, you know, I'll bring a six pack or whatever. Have you ever gone to like a, like a house party where each room has its own like thing, like thing like that going where you go into this room and like, well, they're listening to like, you know, I don't know the smiths or this is like they this is a really chill vibe room yeah where people might be rolling doing a little ecstasy right and you go into this room it's hip-hop people are like doing shots popping shots getting grinding, little, grinding. You know, yeah it might be fucking R- maybe yeah and then there's just you know there's other and then you go outside and there's like some dude playing a fucking acoustic round of fire pit of course yeah do they hire people to do that the fire pit guy yeah yeah i'm, I'm a fire pit guy hit me up just get him on craigslist yeah i'm 30 bucks just, i'm super cheap 30 bucks and whatever leftover beers you got. Yeah, just throw me a beer when you see, when I raise my glass and yeah, clink it. Toss me an anthem. I'll try. <laughs> we'll work for anthems. I mean, it's not a bad gig. No. Do you think that guy ever gets laid? Uh, the dude who plays acoustic at parties, I'm going to say no. But here's the thing. They say, uh, you know, uh, you keep pushing, you keep trying. They can't all say no, which is a really rapey way of saying it. That's super rape. Have you ever heard that? They can't all say no. Yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. very pushy and aggressive. Yeah. And we just we just don't live in that kind we of society. We don't live in that I don't, kind of society. I don't want to. No. At all. Well, I think we should get on to the show. Let's get man. on to the show. We had a good intro here, good catching up in this very comfortable space here at the Speakeasy. Yeah, no, I was about to just like keep going. This chair is nice. And uh we have a super special show tonight. We are joined by the band Masked Intruder. They came through Oklahoma City. By the time you hear this, they've been long gone. They've been in, in the state, right back out of the state. They got to go. Got to get out. They can't stay in one place too long. No, they you, they got the fuzz on their tail. That's right. But uh, we're, we were lucky enough to have them stop by, hang out with us for a little while. And uh, we're going to get to that right now. Right now. Mast Intruder, episode 144. <laughs> All right, we're here with Mast Intruder. Oh yeah, yeah. At how the you doing? Speakeasy. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing real good. Oh, yeah, yeah. good. Kick we ass. got we got blue and green. That's yeah, right. That's right. We got the rest of the band. In the, in yeah, the, they're hanging out just in hanging, the background, checking you know, their phones, doing their, you know, do, doing their their road thing, all sorts of stuff. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, so, you know, do you know how to unlock one? Like, is there a way to unlock it if you don't got the code? Well, it's a problem with the facial recognition. Oh, I tried to is. do it the same way I unlock other locks where I just smashed the shit out of it, but it didn't work too good. They're very fragile. Of, yeah, this, the yeah. phone does. Yeah, it's fucked. Yeah, so, that's got to be hard for uh, stealing cell phones these days with that. It's true. Everything's facial. Unless you go like Android. Oh, no, Android do cell phones too? are easy to steal. Androids are, I think, <laughs> I, it's, like it's true. The phones are easy to steal, but when they are locked, it is difficult. To, I will tell you one thing that when you break it open physically, the bank account numbers and everything are not actually physically in the phone. I know. Ain't that confusing? You it's, might think that yeah. there would be little slips of paper with like all the information. I don't know how cell phones work, but apparently that's not how they work. It's yeah. all in the cloud now. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But yeah. break into the cloud? I wish that we I knew how to figure that do. one out. I think you need some like Avengers type shit to do that. That's right. It's a good song title, though. Yeah, Maybe break, next album. Break Into the Cloud. Yeah. You know, it's subjective. The good oh, is subjective. It's like that movie Hackers. You ever seen that? Oh, yeah. Great good movie. ass movie. Yeah, good ass movie. It was, a, it was a real grim look into the future that we're living in now. Yeah, that's not right. really much. It seems like, like a pretty that. realistic depiction of technology as it is now. Yeah, I think so. Floppy disks. Well, that's, yeah. that's, that's like what the that, internet yeah. looks like, right? When you go and you get online, it's a city of uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. towers and green shit. And and Angelina Jolie with cornrows in her hair. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, and Matt, a, Matthew and Lillard boobs too. Yeah, there, there are. That's there also true. That. Yeah, yeah. The boobs in there. So, what, what brings you guys to Oklahoma? We're playing a show in Oklahoma City tomorrow, but, you know, I'll tell you what, we're actually, you know, truth be told, the full story is that we're on our way out, ultimately, to meet up with the Interrupters for the Fight the Good Fight tour, which yeah. we're doing. When does that start? It starts on February 27th in, in uh, Arizona, in Phoenix. How long are you going to be out? It's a good long tour. It's like a good six weeks, so it's something like that. I, I mean, good long tour would be... Uh, Going all over this beautiful country of ours and uh, also uh, into the uh, Canada country up there, which is also similarly beautiful. A little different. It's a little bit more maple syrup involved. Right. A little more snow than in Oklahoma. There's more snow than in Oklahoma, yeah, but you know, it's pretty similar climate to Wisconsin where we're holed up most of the time. It's basically, that's like an honorary part of Canada as far as I'm concerned. Have you yeah. been there before? To Canada? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But in fact, many times, we love Canada. Uh, Toronto and, and Montreal are two of our favorite cities, period, I think, anywhere in the whole world, honestly. And uh, I'm going to tell you something right now, real talk, ladies are real, especially the double extra beautiful there. I've heard that. I don't know what it is, if it's in the water or something, but it's amazing. You yeah, walk, around and walk around in, in Toronto and just look around and it's like, you try good luck, you know, keeping your jaw up. It's that health care, you know, that free health care. You think that's what it them, is? Yeah, it keeps them nice and, uh, you know. Beautiful. Youthful, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> we beautiful. should get that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, legalized marijuana, too. They got that, too. That's good. Yeah, that's fun, too. But, you know, <laughs> when, it was not le when it's not legal, maybe it's more fun. I yeah, agree. It's definitely yeah. cooler when it's I not legal. I wonder about that. It's like kind of like when they make, uh, you know, McDonald's breakfast available all day. It's like, who gives a shit now? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want my it was all about it was all about making it there before ten thirty. That's right. It was special. Yeah. yeah, especially like on a weekend, you might get up, you might have a hangover. Yeah, you're racing to McDonald's. Exactly. Got to get that McGriddle. And it's the it's the struggle that makes it real. I agree. Yeah, uh, medical marijuana is legal in Oklahoma now. Recently, as oh, in nice. like the last what six months. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it's you see dispensaries everywhere, and it's like. What's the fun in that? I want to buy it, you know, in a parking lot. Like, I want to get on AOL Absolutely. and, like, yeah. get in a chat room. You for want sure. some danger in your yeah. life. Yeah. You, yes. have, you want to have to hide it in, like, a cup and put it in the back of your car so you yeah. can blow them in their nose. That's yeah. right. You now buy it from a high school kid that looks like he could kick your ass. Yeah. Exactly. You want some fear involved. And you, yeah. You also yeah. want the juggle of, is it going to get me high or not? Is it going to be good? Yeah. Or is oh, it going to yeah. be dirty? Yeah. I, right. I always is felt it like, oregano? Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. I felt like it was At least it's still delicious, you know? Yeah. I felt like it was better when you didn't know where it came from and, and every like little number involved in everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a mystery. I don't know. That's right. So you guys have a new album coming out. You better That's believe true. it. And what's it called? It's called Masked Intruder 3. Cool, cool. Yeah, which a lot of people will say that it's three and that's fine. You could call it three. But the truth is that the, the album's actually called Masked Intruder 3. Now, yeah, which you would know if you looked at the album. It just yeah. says it right there. Is, I don't the, know cover, why people are is the cover, when I first saw the cover, it reminded me of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Yeah. Is that was kind of the base, yeah, not, the horror movie theme kind yeah, of? That's a good ass Absolutely. Movie too. Not, not yeah. necessarily specifically that movie, but yeah, definitely like that era of like, you know, VHS covers. I mean, that's some shit that I think is burned into the, our retinas like forever, you know, like some of those old like horror movie sci-fi movie cop buddy movie you know just 80s and 90s like movies mm -hmm. the covers of that it was just so cool looking we like that stuff and we thought that the record is a little bit like a sequel to the other records so mm -hmm. why not fucking run with it so how have you how have you changed 
I'm yeah. hitting you with these hard questions, man. No, that's a good how, question. How did you approach Masked Intruder 3 as opposed to the first two? Yeah, sure. Well, the so the first record, I think, you know, you don't, because it's the first record, you don't realize what you got. You don't kind of know what you're doing. But at the other, on the other hand, you got a lot of like energy. Shit is new. Mm. You're kind of attacking it. Like, this is what we're doing. Here's the idea. And then the second record, you, you're, to some extent, you're trying to live up to the first record, I think, you know, and there are a lot of different approaches to that, you know. Uh, I think some people say, yeah, try to just stick to the formula of the first record. I don't personally think that's the right way to go. I think you want to subtly expand with each, with each mm. you know, release. This third one, I think, it felt a little bit more free to sort of, you know, kind of do whatever we wanted. So to me, it felt like it would be important to try to just remember the headspace that we was in for the first record and just think about what it is that, you know, why do why does Max and Trotter exist? What is it that we do that's cool? And just try to fucking nail that. So have fun with it. And it's really about, you know, just uh, having, uh, basically, I think what really, in essence, what we really are is, uh, you know, a, a punk band sort of just by habit. You know, we love punk rock. We grew up on it. But we, we get in the studio. We're trying to make pop records. That's what we're really shooting for. And number three here, Max and Jordan three, I think it's it's probably our most successful uh, situation in that regard. Like, I feel like we fucking pretty much uh, nailed it. Third put, time's a charm. Yeah, as they say. I heard an old adage also, as they say, that, you know, you have your entire life to write your first record. You have a few years to write your second, third, That's right. fourth. No, and I heard that too, but I, I think it was from the guy from the Goo Goo Dolls. I think it was from He's Korn, a genius. actually. Oh, oh really? Korn? Big, big influence? Oh, yeah. I would say so. I would actually, I would have to say that I like the Goo Goo Dolls like infinitely more than I like Korn. Yeah. You heard it here that's, first. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, hot, that's a hot take right well, there. At least Goo Goo Dolls started out as a punk rock band. Yeah, then, <clears> at least <throat> they have some sense of songs that don't make me want to kill myself. Well, yeah. They, they did, well, basically what you just said about you start out doing like the punk rock thing you grew up on. That's what Goo Goo Dolls did. And then pop. They, yeah. may, they may have went a little too overboard at the pop they realm, went, but yeah, they, they did. They wrote panty dropping music that made them millions of dollars. And that's yeah, good. they made a lot of money, you know, I, like, uh, you know. You got to get it somehow. I don't begrudge them that at all. I mean, if you could write a song that makes, you know, girls that you ain't never even met want to make out with you, mm -hmm. that's great. Have you ever wrote a song that made a girl that you never met want to make out with you? Uh, I, that's the idea. Yeah, that's that's why right. We that's, making the main songs, okay. but <laughs> that's the main goal. I don't know goal. if it actually ever works. Uh, I did have a girl kiss me on stage one time, but I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. she was a cop and it was like an entrapment. Oh, oh, one of yeah. those kind of She's things. She's trying yeah. to plant a trapping device that. in I your think mouth. That's, I think that's literally shit. what it was, yeah. That's a good-ass movie, though. Entrapment? Yeah. Who's in that Sean one? Sean Connery. Oh, shit. And Catherine Zeta-Jones, oh, I remember I the, the laser the scene. There's like a yeah, laser that's scene. that's right. Yeah. Oh, that was that yeah. Fucking oh, yeah. lasers and yeah. shit. I love lasers, dude. Yeah. Any, any movie with lasers, <laughs> that's laser right. centric, Batman. I love it. Sean yeah. Connery was like, hey, I'm, I'm James Bond. I'm getting back into like dancing with lasers and stuff. What, <laughs> a, what about Real Genius? That was like a laser situation there. Yeah, it's pretty laser. Val Kilmer? Right? Yeah. Didn't yeah. they have like a big laser in there? I believe there was a, a giant a laser. Giant laser? A giant I laser? I think there was somewhere. a giant laser. Was I believe it to be true. Pointed at a planet or... It could have been. Okay. It could have been pointed at Val Kilmer too. It's, it's been all, a while since I've seen it. Yeah, it's all oh, coming yeah. together. I, it's been a while since I've seen Val Kilmer. He's I, still around? Did he get I, shot by a laser? Now he's dying. He, he's a little puffy he got now. got fried? Yeah, I don't know if he's doing so well these days. He looks Aww. like he got stung by bees. <laughs> I'm really hoping they'll make a fucking sequel to Willow still, so he better get in shape. That was a good movie. Yeah. Willow's I have to remake that one, yeah. I don't know. Willow. I don't know if I'd want to see that. I remember no? watching Willow when I was super young, and I don't know about y'all, but certain movies would be scary to me as a kid, yeah. even if they weren't scary. Absolutely. Like certain things were just kind of, if, if I didn't understand it, if I didn't really... If I couldn't wrap my head around it, I would just automatically be kind of frightened of it. Well, and Willow yeah. was definitely one of There's those There's some movies. scary shit in that movie. Okay. Oh, yeah. For sure. You got an evil uh, witch, you know, and, and she's like, there's the rain and she's like, ah, I'm an evil witch. Yeah. But, scary. The scary. talking scary squirrel enough. is what freaked me out. Oh, yeah. I got another one. Uh, Secret of Nim. That was great. Oh, yeah. That's scary a great cartoon to me, show. It I don't was know very, why. I think it was very scary. I don't. It was an atmosphere situation. They had the that's bad right. guys. It was like, I'm a big evil rat. Yeah. Scary enough. It's pretty scary. It checks the boxes. Yeah. Blue, I think you just describe movies all the time and have that be like a thing. Yeah. It's like, I'm pretty good at it, yeah. is what you're saying. Well, could, would movies you, are cool. <laughs> would you mind to put your money where your mouth hole is? Yeah, sure. Well, okay. So let me tell you one that I think was scary, even though it wasn't supposed to be Pee Wee's Big Adventure. 
Dude, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tim Burton. Large Marge, dude. Large, Large Marge. Marge. That scene scared the shit out of me. Dude, that was every yeah. kid shit I couldn't their watch pants. That, I couldn't watch that part when I was younger, you know, like I had to look away. And even his dream where the bike is and everything oh, is yeah. weird. And all the clowns. And it's like, yeah, and they're like, I'm an evil clown. Yeah, that's like, it's funny because uh, Tim Burton has come out with so many like creepy movies. That might have been his creepiest one. It could have been. And Johnny Depp wasn't even in it. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's really kind of found his lane. He's real creepy. You yeah, know? he has. And Johnny Depp, I feel like he spiraled into a universe where he just is a, a character from a from a Burton movie. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he yeah. just kind of dresses like that sailor guy. What's his name? Yeah, Captain Jack that's Sparrow. That's it. The, yeah, the, the, kind the, of the man like a, of the a sea. A troubadour version of, of Jack Sparrow. He does. He does play rock music, hat. too, though. He, he, he rips, dude. He, does he really? I don't, right. I don't know if he literally rips, I'm but he does. I'm skeptical yeah. of people that are like, I'm a movie star, and then now I'm also a rock star. I'm like, yeah. well, I think pick he was, one, asshole. Yeah, I think some he room was, for the rest uh, of us. He was both, though, when he first started, and he got more famous with doing acting and stuff. Is that why he did that Tom Petty video? Which what? one? Now I always confuse it. I don't know if it's great wide open or if it's uh, into the great wide, wide open. open. Yeah. Hey. I think that's it. <laughs> right. uh, I thought it was great white open. Oh, it was like a tournament white? for sharks. Yeah. Uh, or or oh, the, it was like a tribute to the band. Yeah, great white. A, uh, the band that opens for great white. That's their. Yeah, into that. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't last dance with Mary Jane because that starred. No, 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 no. Tom that's Petty. a good-ass song, Petty too. Was in that hey, year. full circle. Now we're talking about marijuana again. All right. There you go. Oh, yeah. And when they would play it on the radio, they would bleep out the word joint. Oh, that's you don't know how it feels. Damn, oh, that's they right. Ble- bleep but, out uh, joint? Yeah, it would be like, let's roll. I think that may have just been in, in Oklahoma. No. We're pretty You know what they would here. do? I remember this. They didn't bleep out joint. They uh, changed roll to hit. That's so right. Instead of rolling a joint, you're hitting a joint. Like if That's you're going the to a place, thing I ever yeah, fucking going to yeah. bar. But I kind of like hitting a joint, as in you know, like uh, knocking off a liquor store or some shit. That's a good idea too. It also could refer to just smoking the pot too. Right. That's right. also right. Can I hit that? Let me hit that. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, I mean, who was the guy that sat down and like edited that in Pro Tools, or maybe it was tape back then? Yeah, it probably was. What a job! No shit. That's what that. It was like basically like a trained monkey. You had somebody that was highly trained. They would sit in a studio and they would just cut tape and fucking put it together. Now that was one thing for like a punk record or something. But picture like a fucking Def Leppard hysteria. Yeah. Where like the guitar parts were fucking recorded one guitar string at a time. Is that true? Because I've heard that. That's true. No way. That's the fucking look it up on the internet. Would the internet lie that shit? <laughs> I don't Google fucking it. think so. <laughs> That's, that seems to be harder than just playing it. For sure. Right? Oh, definitely. But you're but, going for that sound clarity, and you want to do something fucking super special to make every fucking... You want to blow people's minds and shit? You yeah. got to fucking record one note at a time and be like, That's holy right. shit, fucking... We can, next thing we're going to do is invent a space shuttle. <laughs> Did you guys... Or a giant laser. Yeah, did, did you, have you guys ever too. explored the one yeah. string at a time? No, we never did no one string at a time, but we've done a lot of shit in the studio that you could never possibly do, you know, live. Yeah. Like, uh, a good example is uh, um, uh, Most Beautiful Girl on MI, like the, the response in the chorus, you know, Most Beautiful Girl, it's like 64 voices. You can't do that live. No. I mean, you could if you have a whole choir. If you're like Slipknot. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Another mask. Yeah, yeah, you know, but group of guys. I've forgotten that those guys wear masks. They do, don't you forgot. they? Forgot. Yeah, <laughs> I just remember them for every other quality about them that everybody cared about. There yeah. was the one guy that had like the long nose. Yes, that's and he right. would do this a lot. Oh like, yeah, I saw them live. Actually, it was speaking of frightening things from my childhood. It was a not too far from here. Actually, they played, and it was in like an old theater. And uh, the Tower Theater, actually, on 23rd Street, they just renovated this place. It's a beautiful, like, old, classic, like, 1950s-esque theater. Yeah. They were cl- they had um, curtains hanging, like, all the way up each side. And the, the drum guys, not the drummer, but the other drum Percussion fellas. Is, yeah. The barrel the, 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 the steel drum yeah. beaters yeah. Yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They were, like, the climbing up them and ripping them down oh, and wow. throwing them in the crowd and they had to like shut the concert down because <laughs> it was a fire hazard no shit it was like being in hell yeah right super scared i i grew up like in a being from oklahoma i grew up like in the bible belt in a nice baptist home so yeah. that was the first time i ever saw anything like that right yeah and it was fucking scary 
Yeah, but I bet you were like, this is sweet. Say oh, yeah. the rules. I'm, I'm still talking about it 20 years later. So exactly. yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, when yeah. you're a teenager or anything like that, anything that's rebellious, you like latch on to. And it's so know? ironic because I think like the more like uptight you try to raise your kid, you might succeed. Like if success is like getting, you're raising a kid that will never fit into a you know, regular society, they're always going to be like, oh, Jesus is my co-pilot. But like, <laughs> you know, if, if the, usually I feel like in America, you try to raise your kid like all like prim and proper and they end up being fucking more insane yeah and then some of the most like uh like conservative christian parts of the country are like really the most like fucked up like they got the most strip clubs and like most like weird like repressed the seedy underbelly yeah it's all there you can't actually make people not want to see you know naked boobs and stuff you just yeah strip clubs are red I don't like them. <laughs> I I haven't been to one in many many years. You know when when I turn twenty one, it's like well, oh, I'm not I'm allowed go inside this. them. I just think like, you just yeah. hang yeah, out in the parking lot. Probably pretty cool. Right? Do you stand outside and put like a cup not against the wall. Naked ladies <laughs> yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently there's a place in France where the naked ladies dance, and uh, there's a hole in the wall. I heard about that. Where yeah. you can see it, you can see it all. You can see it all. Have you seen it all? Have you been to France? We have been to France, but we did not find this place. Yeah, <laughs> I think it might be a lie. Yeah, we found some holes in the wall. Lie. They were of a different nature. So we, that's uh, right. We met you guys when you were on tour with MXPX. Yeah, that's right. And we were in Denver, hanging yeah. out in the green room. It was actually just one that one, one show. show. Oh, okay, you just played the one show with them. Cool. Um, you, I think you broke a bottle of whiskey, or didn't something fall off a table? Yeah, it could be. I think the bass drum was making this bottle of whiskey, and oh, yeah. that was like right in the middle of our episode. Yeah, I got blamed for it. That's right. That you got blamed for it. I didn't do it. And then I you was blamed sitting, blue. I think I may have. Yeah. It, well, I don't think I would do that, though. No. Now, I've been known to drink a bottle of whiskey sometimes, but break it, no. yeah, maybe after, wasting. after drinking it. Yeah. I when it's emptied. That's when yeah, you do yeah. it. That's the proper time to like throw it in the street and be like, my life is depressing. Like you throw the empty? Yeah, You don't exactly. throw the full bottle, right? That's how people know that you're serious. Your problems are real, more real than theirs. And that's, you know, that's a law breaking. That's a, what is that, littering? That's a fine, yeah, right? Well, there's it's several, easy. I mean, you know, obstruction of justice, I think. It could be. Possibly. If you, if you throw it at a cop, it exactly. definitely yeah. is more a cop illegal. trying to arrest somebody? A, yeah. a, shard, like, a shard slices a cop and you're in all kinds <laughs> yeah, of fucking that's trouble. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a whole world right. of mess. Yeah, flagrant use of shards. So yeah, by the time this comes out, you guys will have already been on your way. Mm-hmm. But I definitely want to talk about the record a little more. Absolutely. You said it was kind of, you know, you nailed it. You nailed it on this I one. I think so. Yeah, there's a lot of, so to, this record has a lot of, uh, it has a lot of like sort of different vibes. Like each song kind of like really sits apart from the other songs where there's like a flow and each one is kind of like its own little piece of a story. You know, but without feeling like too disparate, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, oh, what the fuck? Where is this coming from? All of a sudden it's reggae. It's not like that. <laughs> you don't have any you know reggae, I mean? no. reggae breakdowns no. or reggaeton? No, we really don't. We don't. But uh, but there are, without like leaving the Masked Intruder universe, I just think that there's, it's really like chock full of musical ideas. So it's like kind of interesting. Well, it's super interesting, man. Um, I was... I was told about you right before we were, well, we were on our way to that show yeah. and I'd seen you guys and, and heard of you guys, but Josh actually introduced me to y'all and like from the get go, I was like, dude, this is fucking super catchy. Oh, thank you. I dig that. I dig the aesthetic, the, the real life aesthetic. I, I dig yeah. all of that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, put the knife up, dude. Well, I'm sorry. I thought I, thought I was just getting worked up because you were talking about it. It, I, it was beautiful. And then I saw you guys live and I was like, fuck, like this is super fun. Oh, I'm glad you, yeah, we, yeah, we try absolutely. to have fun. Yeah. I, th- I think f- having fun is the most important thing. You know, sometimes you got bands out there that are like, yeah, well, you know, here's what a show is. You get on stage and you play some songs. That's true. But you know, here's the thing. You got YouTubes, you got fucking other kinds of things. I feel like if you're going to try to entertain people, you should give them a little bit more than just, you know. You got to make it special. You make it special. You make it a fun event. So we try to have as much fun as possible. And that's, you know, that's a big goal of ours. I think our shows are pretty fun and it's cool to play with bands like MXPX, uh, the, like the Interrupters that are also like definitely all about having a real good time. Oh, yeah. Who's some of your other favorite bands? Not, you know, not to put you on the spot here. Yeah, sure. But um, I want to play favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, like uh, to listen to or like that Anything, we man. With? The floor is yours. I would say like one of the bands I listen to all the time still, you know, they probably need to come out with some new music soon is uh, Toy Guitar. Yeah, we love They're that. They're real man. fucking good. That's a good point. And, uh, you know, like, uh, one of the, some of the bands we toured with. Like, uh, we've toured with so many bands that have, it's been really, really, really great. So, a couple that, uh, that uh, pop into mind that were just amazing to people to just be with on a tour were Less Than Jake. Yeah. Real Big Fish is another band yeah. that, like, just was, like, couldn't be more supportive and just, like, sweet. 
That's right. That Aaron oh. seems like a real sweetheart. He's a real nice dude. Yeah, oh, I yeah. saw them when I was 15 years old, man, and I'm 38 now. I saw them here in Oklahoma City, <laughs> and I, 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 if you don't mind me divulging yeah, for a ahead. moment, go ahead. I was ready to go to this show. I had, I had, a, I had a girl I was sweet on. We were going to go together. I, uh, I had some sweet suspenders on. I had some Doc Ooh. Martens on. Sounds nice. Yeah, it's oh, like, you were like all Scott out. I was, yeah. dude. I was ready all to right. skank. L- little rude boy, ready yeah. to go. Oh yeah, yeah. and. Uh, I, I stay or I crowd surfed for the very first time. Yeah. Wow. And like I got a ska show. Yeah. Right. And I, 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 got I mean, that's up. cool. You know, you used to be able to do that back in the day, you know, now, now I see all the time behind stages, like no stage diving, <laughs> yeah. no crowd, you know, you will be thrown out. I know it. I'm like, that is yeah. so not punk. It's cause some kid busted his head. And right. Some parents sued a venue and, and yeah. I understand. But and totally. That, and, totally. And that is actually very not punk. Like <laughs> fucking, Oh, we got sued. Oh, well. yeah, yeah, but you know what's punk is not worrying about what's written on the rules. You know, who that's gives also a shit. That's true. More punk. So maybe. they're giving you a chance, when you're cl- basically. And you're it's clearly, an opportunity. You're that's clearly right. defying a they're, written law. That's right. They're giving you the chance to be a punk. Yeah, got it. So I, I crowd surf, and I'm, I'm having a good time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like skanking in midair by that point, point. Oh, and wow. I get pushed up on the stage. You're talented. And I'm just like a baby deer, and my foot gets <laughs> caught in the singer's mic cable, oh, and shit. I straight up pull his mic over in the middle of a song. Oh, and you oh, know he yeah. was pissed. He kind of just like laughed, because he could tell I was struggling. Yeah. And this big bouncer comes out and grabs me and throws me off the stage, like down these stairs beside the stage, and I hit the back door, like with my face and my arm, Dude. to I kind of like come to and I'm outside in the middle of winter. I was covered in sweat, no jacket or anything. It was snowing and I had to walk all the way around the building to try to get back in. And I was like, dude, I could literally die out For here. sure. I was that, you know, hot and, and bothered. And I would go back up to the front door and like the bounce, it's like the classic bouncer looks the other way and I just run in and he's like, come huh. back here. You know, and I go back in and do, I just get back to skanking. Damn, that was what beautiful. I'm born to do. That's great. Yeah, that's right. And that's job. Another day. Thanks. And that's, then it was that's just applaudable. And then you were skanking, and it was just a sea of white kids, and they couldn't tell which one you were. No, so they couldn't no. find you to kick you out again. No, you, there's a lot of Doc Martens in the house. That's yeah, right. for sure, a lot. Yeah. So that's three ska bands you guys talked about. Opening. Yeah, I want to say uh, since we're talking about great bands that we like a lot, uh, want, I just want to give a shout out to our buddies in Rotterdam, Lone Wolf. They're real great. Yeah, that's a great band. Them. You should check that out. So I mean, I'll tell they're you, they're not some, a ska band either. So um, another yet. even now, yet. another yeah. band that you know that we've done tour with that was just really super super cool to us was uh, No Effects. That that's a bunch of cool dudes too. I've been a long time fan. I know Josh has. Yeah. Uh, I have seen them a few times over the years. Yeah, uh, hit or miss. But oh, in terms when they of, hit, they really hit. Oh yeah, they're sweet. Yeah, they're a great band. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, they've it, been around too long to not. Have some stinkers. Absolutely, you're gonna throw you're gonna throw a foul every now and then. Yeah, but yeah. when but when they hit, they're like perfect. Oh yeah, and it, it all started with me with uh, I heard they suck live. It's a great one. So good. I mean oh, that yeah. that is perfect. It's pretty damn good. It's wonderful. Are you guys gonna ever do a live album? I think that we would we should definitely do a live album. I, I agree. I would yeah, like we'll to do, do it. that because Capture part, that energy, man. What, that's right. And a big thing with us is we we are really into that sort of Ramones thing of like when you record a record you you you're making it a pop record, you know. Mm-hmm. When you play it live, you play it punk. So it's way fucking faster. Faster, yeah. And it has a different energy about it which is so appropriate to the live environment. Uh, but I think there's a lot of people out there that probably wish that we would put out a live record because they'll, you know, you'll see people say things on the internet like, "Oh, Master Dude is not even fucking punk," and then somebody will be like, "You should see him live, though." Yeah. So there's probably some people out there that are like waiting for us to do it. It should be one of those. Uh, I think bands really do this a lot anymore. It used to be a big thing, a double disc live CD with a DVD. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, bring back the, the show. DVD. Yeah, yeah. We'll bring it back. Because <laughs> like you fucking said, you got or you know, fucking uh, download Seems like code a good for business a video decision. or whatever. Yeah, I agree. Sure. Like not sp- even high def, just like real DVD <laughs> shit. Just like, what is it? That's six probably by nine what or kids will be into in like 50 years. Yeah. I, You know, it's funny you say that because, you know, vinyl came back, it's back, whatever. Yeah. I've actually recently kind of went back to CDs as far as like, oh, I found this at a thrift store or, yeah. or I'll, I'll, I'll find a CD on eBay that I used to have that sure. might not be on vinyl or, of course, you can listen to it on Spotify, but sometimes I kind of want that that jacket. The little physical know? representation. Yeah, yeah. But that's why records are even cooler though because it's just bigger. Yeah. 
And if you got one you really like, you fucking hang it up on your wall. Yeah. And oh, just yeah. like, so, uh, you know, leave your door unlocked and let me know about it. <laughs> yeah, I like the jacket, though. That That's like the old, that's the old school, that's like the ritual of getting a record that I think kids used to grow up with that I don't know kids would grow up with now. Like, you buy a record, you sit down, you listen to it, and you look at the fucking shit inside. Mm-hmm. And you, you roll re- a joint on the jacket. Yeah, you, you, and you hit oh, a joint. Yeah. You hit yeah. another yeah, joint. Yeah, doing... full circle again. All right, <laughs> Let's keep you, it going. You, something like you pull out the uh, the CDs. You pull out the you know the the jacket, the sleeve, the uh, what artwork. Yeah, maybe. They have, and something would fold nice... onto a poster. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, like when I That's got right. Green Day's Insomniac, I pulled that. I was like, holy shit! A oh, great poster. A good ass album. Yeah, yeah, great, great, great record. Yeah, the gr- Green Day's a big uh, influence on us for sure. Green. That's Green's favorite band for sure. Oh. Absolutely. Great like... name, great band. <laughs> All, full circle, all the way back around personally. And back too. around the weed. Yeah. <laughs> all the way back around weed. the yeah. Although full circle, I will say, not my favorite Pennywise album. Oh, shit. I will concur. I will agree. We're Actually, my favorite here. is About Time. I was going to say that. That's the, You got the bomb on the cover. It's a great Yeah, it's great a good, really good one. And uh, also Face to Face, that was a big band for me back, oh, back, face, back, yeah. in, that, back in the day. I only big, had big one, choice and shit. I only had one Face to Face album. It was Ignorance is Bliss, mm-hmm. I believe. And I don't know if that was one of their more well-received albums. I think it wasn't. I don't think it was. But I think it, you ever had that happen to you where you just you find out about a band, you buy whatever CD you see or hear yeah. from a friend, and you find out it's kind of the, the, the stinker, as but, you said. But maybe you like it. You're like, yeah, yeah I like this. Well, and people are like, oh, that's not even the good record. And you're like, well, what the fuck? Yeah, what's <laughs> yeah. the good one? I like this one. <laughs> and then yeah. from here on out, you're the guy that picked the shitty face-to-face record. Right. And Nobody what, trusts your taste in music anymore. Yeah. But it's, a, it's, a, it's a harsh reality. But that's the way people are with each other. They're just mean and unforgiving sometimes, you know. But I think Face to Face, you know, that's a really good band. That was a great one. And, and those are also sweet dudes. I will tell you, and I think this is a thing about punk rock, uh, which Ska is kind of just like an extension of that. I yeah. mean, we're not talking about Ska like Bob Marley. You know, I'm talking, we're talking about like white dudes <laughs> doing up picks. Right, yeah. right. right. White dudes wearing plaid pants and Ska, sideburns. Ska <laughs> punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So anyways... That's, you know, most of the bands that we've done tours with, they're all sort of in that world. And I have to say, everybody seems pretty cool. I think it's a it's a world where people are just sort of sweet and nice to each other. Yeah. There's a little bit of a sense of community and trying to help each other out. Yeah, I've said it like a million times with Ska. Like, I always got shit for liking it. But my thing is, put on a Ska album and try not to, try to be pissed. You yeah. can't be angry listening to it. That's why people don't like it. Yeah, because they want to be mad. Because they're like, this isn't angry enough. Hmm. Fuck being angry. I mean, I, sometimes you want to get angry. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes you want to break stuff, like sometimes. a biscuit, but you know. <laughs> yeah. That's full circle to the intro. Yeah, just, we yeah. Sometimes it's just one of those days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, who, who who was the other, who was the Were female artist that sang one of those days? That Just one of those days that a girl goes mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. I got no fucking idea what I, I want to say it's a Dina right Howard. I'm just pulling this out of the thin air. I'm that not sure. Right. I was hoping to oh, quiz yeah. y'all about funky it. Funky Cold Adina Howard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Funky Cold Adina. I don't even know who that is. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's is that okay. a mis- misheard lyric? It might, it might be. Yeah. And I like and I like top, I like Top 40 Pop. I listen yeah. to that shit. I do too. I, I, man, I have a very broad taste in music. My favorite band is laughable to most, but I also like. I listen I've never, to. Well, what I don't is think it? I've ever heard them. You're just gonna say that and leave us Dude, hanging. Don't, y'all don't look at me. What oh, is it? I don't Th- give a shit. Three Eleven. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I absolutely 311 love them. Three Eleven is tight. I thought you were like talk sing, about white down, guys down, playing the sky. Right? Right? Yeah. I don't know what the fucking I, words are, but that guy sounds cool. I thought your energy looked a little amber. Well, oh yeah. <laughs> it's a color. okay. Uh, yeah. I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> That's all right. No, it's interesting though. Um. So, like, getting to sit down with people like you and, and MXPX and, yeah. and the guys from the Get Up Kids and all that stuff, it's like, you know, growing up, I never would have thought I would have been able to do this. And it's like looking from the outside in. And then, like, we get to go hang out with you guys yeah. backstage. It was like, wow, this is so cool. And you're right about people being so friendly. Like, everybody's so nice. Pretty pretty much, yeah. And I wonder if it's the same. And, like, I'm sure everybody's nice in the white boy reggae bands because they're all stoned, you know? Yeah, but probably like, everybody's high enough to not be yeah. a dick. But do you think, like... <laughs> I mean, it's also just, like, you know, there's a fucking industry full of people working with other people you gotta be a nice person or you're gonna fucking yeah but i think if you go right. into the metal scene there's oh, a lot yeah. there's a lot of just being a a prima dick. donna bullshit right that's what i was wondering like is the aggro does that carry over from the lyrics and I from think the performance so. I, don't, I don't even know if it's if it's that carryover i just think that it's a thing that it's a, that it's a fact about punk rock that there is this sense of community that's actually there mm-hmm. you know it's not like uh maybe 
true in every case. I'm sure there's sort of exceptions here and there, but I think that generally speaking, it's actually sort of just true that people are uh, they're cognizant of the community. And I don't want to say that every metal band is a dick. That's no. surely not true. Most of the metal bands that we know are also really cool. I just think that there's a little bit less of a sense of community in that scene. Well, if you're going to play one string at a time on an album, maybe you're a bit of an asshole. It could be. Is that metal, right? Would you say <laughs> Def Leppard metal? I think that you they were definitely pre- called metal, metal back then. I think you would have yeah. back then definitely called it metal. Yeah. In but fact, you would have called Aerosmith well, metal it, back then. Specifically, right. it's, that's it's, fucking weird. What is it? Yeah, no wave of British heavy metal. Right. Well, and not to not to you know sound like an asshole myself, but you know, bands like Black Sabbath were known as being like the heaviest bands of all time. Right. But if you go back and listen to those records, it's like. It just sounds like four stoners in a garage, like with yeah. shitty amps. Wait, because not, yeah. I don't what know. What are you saying? It doesn't age well. No. They, they, well, you know, like uh, it just doesn't sound heavy by today's standards. Right. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say exactly. it doesn't age well because some of that's just it's still fun to listen to. It's sure. Just, oh yeah, I, I, I like. I enjoy if you some of their fucking metal album, I you want to hear some like jada, jada, <laughs> you know that shit yeah. sounds cool. One string at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, play some of that one string at a time. I fucking dare you. <laughs> Is that why, like, our parents freaked out with, like, the Marilyn Manson's, like, when when it's when metal and, and when music started getting, like, or, like, that kind of shit? Like, you know, <laughs> it's, like, growly and not, ah, nah, man. Like, that's not metal. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 like you said, it didn't age that well. But at but, the time, it was probably just as scary as, like, a cannibal corpse is now. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, that was the beginning. And when you got a fucking little seedling coming out of the ground and it grows into a tree, and you look at pictures of your little, little seed, seedling, you're like, that's not a tree. Same thing. That's... That's so wow, that's wise. deep. That is yeah. wise. And also a, a little stupid sounding. <laughs> yeah. Right in between. <laughs> right in between. I think that I think that uh in uh you know what happens is that you as a teenager rebelling, you you want music that your parents don't like. Like if your parents are like, Oh I, yeah, yeah, oh, I like yeah. it sounds pretty good, I can dig that, then that's you're like, like Oh the well then I uh, never mind. See that that's yeah. so true. I was that's raised right. on like nineties, like late eighties, early nineties pop country yeah and not the shit now like i can't i i'm gonna be honest i can't stand like most modern country but like the classics you're george Strait, you're clint black you know you're alan jackson all of that yeah and then for the longest time i was like man fuck that stuff i can't stand it and now i'm kind of come back around to it where i, I, I at least cool. appreciate it i like it i like i like that pop country stuff i was never i never listened to that shit until like so now i can listen to country radio i'm like listen to this fucking song i like that garth brooks it's silly like oh, yeah. a, oklahoma boy there's oh, a lot of silly oh, yeah. songs yeah. and like right. so much lyrical witticism it's mm-hmm. cute and i'll tell you what else the guitar solos in that shit are legit they got good serious studio musicians playing if you break them down too i mean a lot of a lot of country especially like 90s pop country is essentially punk or if you just add a little gain to the guitar yeah. if it was it's if it, three four chords that's the same about, structure exactly and that's mm-hmm. not even just the that era of of country if you if you listen to fucking me first and give me give me's you know love their country yeah one of their best records mm-hmm. Those songs lend themselves beautifully to that. You can hear the seeds. Absolutely. You know, full circle again. Seeds yes. planted, growing. That's right. That's right. Green. Talking about we're weed talking again? about weed now, yeah, right. not trees. But trees is also a term for fucking weed. That so, is you true. Know, like, uh, we know Smoke we're, trees. we're all in the same uh, chamber of uh, commerce. Orchestration <laughs> and commerce here. Yeah, that's right. A lot of chambers. Is that Harry Potter yeah, reference. Yeah, yeah, that right. chamber. Yeah. 30, oh. 36 chambers at the. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I was going to make a Wu Tang yeah, reference. Wu Tang reference. We we listen. Uh, there's this country band I really like. I'm sure you've heard of the band Alabama. Oh yeah. Uh, we there's a song that Josh and I like that Josh and I have been friends since we were 14. So like well over half of our lives now. Yeah, that's a long time. It's long a long time. lot of lot of arguing. I'm glad you didn't say fighting. Florida Georgia line. Oh God, no. I would have been like, this interview is over. No, that shit sucks. I can't listen to that no. stuff. There's I'm a song by Alabama out. that uh, we've always joked around that said. Uh, if you speed this up just a little bit and add a little more distortion, it sounds exactly like the All American Rejects. Yeah, like exactly. Sure. And we told that to Mike once. What did he think? He didn't like it. Yeah, but he probably was still smiling. Oh, he, he, yeah. One, one of the sweetest boys and yeah. boys alumni. One of the sweetest guys I've ever met in my life. He I is love just Mike. a fucking rainbow in in a t shirt. Yeah, a, a, <laughs> a tiny black t shirt. Yeah, I, I love him. Cereal eating rainbow in a tight t shirt. Yeah, and he's got one of the most unfuckwithable record collections. That dude yeah. is a nerd, dude. 
he has like old display cases. Yeah. Like from, you know, a shutdown record store, like a Hastings or whatever oh, yeah. it was. It's I went to his house not too long ago and I was blown away by yeah. the organization. It's ridiculous. It's like a fucking record store when you go in his house. It really is. A very clean, nice. He's huh, like one of those like store. comic book nerds, but so, with records. Yeah, for sure. Where does he live? <laughs> I'll tell you. All right. I won't tell Maybe you. Maybe you invite him over here. Let me know where he lives and uh, I'll take a break. I'm sure with a collection like that, he's got ADT security. Yeah, we work with him. We work yeah. with him. Yeah, that won't keep us away. <laughs> Wait, he worked he worked on the new record with us along with Roger. Very cool. Yeah, he told me about it. I was really excited when I heard there was a that connection. Yeah. That connection yeah, there. it's really cool. I think it's a little bit weird to work with two producers, but we enjoy it. You know, we hang out, we get Roger and, and Mike and, and the band and we all go through the songs and, and basically talk about everybody gets a chance to kind of talk about anything in the song that could be improved, could make it stronger and we're all brainstorming there. It's like pretty cool. Now, how do you do this by text, by email, letter, handwritten letter? We do it together. Oh. I mean, we, we, we emailed them demos of the songs before we started getting in the studio but we got in the studio and and then we spend the first basically week just going over the songs and just doing you know talking about how to make them before we even start recording at all so you had like a vision in mind before you hit one of those six strings and recorded a single note absolutely correct? okay that's oh, right you better fucker believe it it's good to have a plan. You got to have a plan. Otherwise, what are you doing? You know? You're just sitting in a room, drinking beer, talking about weed, green exactly. chambers, all, all kinds right. of stuff. 311. <laughs> Sounds good. All yeah. right. It's my kind of night. Yeah. I'm just picturing like you guys had like a board. Like, you know, when you, uh, yeah, like those like 70s, 80s uh, cop movies where they're trying to find a killer and like got all these strings going across the shit with pictures oh, yeah. and shit. Like, we kind of did. Yeah. You kind of, we kind of did. I want to do this, but then somehow I want to bring this into it, but I want to do it in B minor. <laughs> I, I was picturing you were talking about like the secret where you like, vi- you have a visual, what's it called? A dream board or a visual? You're talking board? about vision the secret board. is in like the secret, the fucking like selling yourself. Yeah. Like, like the book. Yeah. Like getting rich. Like I think Holy Oprah shit. was like hawking yeah. that a long time. Yeah. That crock of shit they were hawking back yeah. in 2007 yeah. I was going to say, what that's was probably the, bullshit. You yeah. know, the secret to getting rich. What was the secret? What, what is? Steal it. Yeah. They can, you take get, it. Find somebody rich. Just take that shit. Take their money. And okay. when you do There's that, there's already a shit ton of rich people in the world. You just get that. And when you when you get that, they don't have that. So you're even richer because it's, you're like making exactly. a bigger gap. Exactly. Good. I I, I visualize like people listening to this show mm-hmm. and being like, "What the fuck are Still they talking about?" Happened. <laughs> um, someday, someday. Still what? Ghost out there. Yeah. Yeah. Ghost. That's a good band. Never met yeah, them. That is a good ass ghost. I, band. I, good movie. Too. I have seen them actually. Yeah, they were, great movie. They put on <laughs> quite a show. More. Yeah, it's a great show. All right. It's a great show. And that's a band that ties into that controversy about what is and isn't metal. Like if they existed in the time of Black Sabbath, it was unquestionably would be a heavy metal band. But now that's people right. are like, it's not. That's not metal. No. Well, then, well, what is it? I, I don't know. I had a friend. Yeah, it's we, like theatrical we, music. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think a, it's metal. We went together. Uh, we saw them with the Deftones, and my friend leaned over and he said, "This is really cool, but he kind of sounds like Weird Al." And ever, <laughs> ever since he said that, I cannot not hear that. Oh, like, that's so weird. But, like, but I hear this Weird, weird Al, Al is fucking tight. I've seen Weird Al live, and he yeah. was. I wish you hadn't just said that. One of the best concerts I've are ever ru- seen in my life. Are you ruining it for me right now? It's <laughs> if I fucking picture Weird Al when Dude. I listen to Ghost in the future, oh, I'm coming shit. back here. I hope you do. Oh you shit, you motherfucker! Meet me here. <laughs> Although I would be interested in hearing like a polka medley of Ghost songs. Dude, they that, should have oh, him guest on a song. Yeah. No. They should tour together. That would be tight. That would be great for their careers. <laughs> Wait for that Weird Al parody cover where he comes out in like the yeah, makeup right. shit. He kind of looks like that now. Oddly enough, he's in, uh, not a young young fella. Yeah, you know, it happens to all of us. He's had a long successful career, and he can look however he wants. Well, he just came out with that movie. Oh, did he? UHF. Oh yeah, that's a tight yeah, movie. Yeah, that just came out. <laughs> New release. Oh so, yeah, it's, it's right, right on the wall at Blockbuster. Yeah, <laughs> on DVD. Oddly enough, are you, it's you a good guys one. are like pioneers. You're making a podcast in the fucking eighties, huh? Yeah, or nineties, I guess. Taking we, it back. We have yeah. a time machine. That's right. It was definitely from the eighties. No one will ever know. I UHF, like eighty four. Really? Yeah, early eighties. Eighty two, eighty four. For sure, it was. The, it, yeah, I think so. They, Michael well, Richards pre Seinfeld. Was, pre- well, a lot of that was filmed in Tulsa. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's hmm. cool. Tulsa's actually a pretty big movie town. Oklahoma actually kind of flies under the radar, but there's a lot of stuff filmed here, I think, because it's cheap. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like, open space. We yeah. give we give really good tax credits to movie people and, who make movies here. And there's not a lot of, like, 
landmarks no. so you can say it's anywhere like if you see you oh, know yeah. if you see like the st louis arch in the yeah. background then you know you're you in know st. You're louis, louis, st louis but well, we that, don't have that here you know, that doesn't nothing. stop people from recording or making movies in toronto and saying it's fucking new york city they yeah do they do all the time they do that or like but, New Zealand and say it's the fucking Shire or whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. Why don't you go to the fucking Shire and actually film there, assholes? Or Middle Earth. <laughs> like you don't got a big enough budget? Jesus. <laughs> Getting heated. I think he's had a little too much whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what are y'all going to get into after this, man? The night is pretty young. Yeah. It's we're probably, 9 o'clock. We're probably going to drink some more and then uh, we're see. We're going to hang out with our buddy Garrett from uh, Red City Radio. Yeah, that's true. Damn. Nice. You know, you, you know that band? Have oh, you oh, talked oh, to him? Oh, yeah. You yeah. talked to Garrett? I've known oh, yeah. him. Garrett hasn't been on the show, but we've we've talked about having him on the show. He, he's he gone all the time. They're a great band. They yeah, are a great super band. Super good. Uh, I've, Josh and I both have known Garrett for a long, 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 long time. He's a legit dude. They're doing it too. Like I, they're traveling all the time. I'm like, man, yeah, they work a lot. That little Good tour for thing you. they just got off of was fucking crazy. Yeah. Like Australia, Japan, Hawaii. Like fuck, oh, like yeah. just back, back, back to back. That's cool. Well, yeah. We, yeah we, I mean, if you're gonna fly all the way, all the fucking might as well do it. Yeah. Did they go to France? Uh, no. Oh. Should have made a stop. To oh, see that's those too bad. Yeah. Naked see, lady the, see the naked ladies dance. Yeah. That, okay, that song. It's everyone's heard it, but do you know where it started? Are you talking about Kesha? No, there's a place in France. I think with it's the started by ladies. Kesha. No, I think it's a Kesha yeah. song. Probably. She traveled back to 1985. I mean, that makes sense. And told everyone on the playground that 1985. Song. Yeah. No, I don't know where it came from. Where, I, don't know. I mean, where I was three. That no, shit, but that, I bet nobody knows. It's one of those things, like you know, you hear you hear that song when you're a kid. You don't know where it started, but you know, you guys are from Wisconsin or up north, wherever. Yeah. The, wherever the hell you're from, but everyone here, you, everyone hears it. But you also hear, you know, the. Uh, but the Richard Gere shoved a gerbil up his ass. Like, yeah. you know, you hear all those things. I know. I remember when... Pre-internet. Like, at some point in the 90s, people were saying, like, Chris Tucker died. And I was like, really? And he didn't. He didn't. His career did. Oh. It, a hot take. <laughs> hot take. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's still hot. Here on that's still hot after all these I don't years. know. He's pretty super green, in my opinion. Yeah. He's, he's green. He's, he's set. He's fine. I thought totally I was fine. green. But. Don't you remember from the fifth element? Green is like what they say for cool. Is it? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. Green. Super green. Super green. Oh, yeah. Shit. That's a good Tucker. Thank you. A little bit of Weird Al on there, though. <laughs> yeah. A little, little strange. <laughs> Everything's Weird Al with you, man. I know. Weird yeah, Al is life. Might hey, be obsessed. Yeah. Weird Al is pretty great. What's your favorite Weird Al song? We're going to wrap up here soon, but I need to ask a few more tough, oh, tough questions. Hard my question. favorite, my favorite, favorite Weird Al. What's, what's your one? favorite original that a Weird Al song is based on? So for me, I'm going to say this right now. My favorite Weird Al material, period, is always the medleys. I think the medleys are the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, favorite original that a Weird Al song is based on? I probably have to go, and I know that this is like, probably people nowadays are like, oh, oh, you like that song. But, right. You know, Poser. Nirvana smells like teen spirit. I thought that was a fucking great. It was a good one. Song and record. Smells like Nirvana. Yeah. Was that the name of the song? I believe that so. That was the name of the Weird Al cover, yeah. 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 And he said it was hard to bargo Margo's ass with all the marbles, marbles in, in your mouth. mouth. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty cute. <laughs> and wasn't he like spitting, but but when he said that, wasn't he spitting chess pieces out of his mouth in the video? I want to say. I think you might have a Baron Stain Bear sort of situation oh, going no, on over there. Mandela effect uh, with, with the Weird Al effect. You mean the Baron Stain Bears. Yeah. 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 I, uh, my favorite was, this is a deep cut, all right? Strap in. But he did a, you know, he would either do like a straight cover song or he would do like a song inspired by a genre. Yeah, sure. He did one that was like a Nine Inch Nails. It was called... What was it called? Do you remember? Oh, it was called Germs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was to the tune of the Nine Inch Nails song, Terrible Lie. Are you familiar with this song? I'm very familiar I've with definitely the, heard that. Nine Inch or, Nails as, or as Josh called it. Telling a lie. We, we talk about misquoted lyrics a lot on the show. Yeah. Josh thought that that, you know. Telling it goes, a lie! Exactly. <laughs> Which it, it, we, and we always go back and listen to them. We're like, I, okay. I wasn't a Nine Inch Nails fan when the song came out. I didn't oh. know the name of the song. Are you now? We, I mean, I... I can tolerate Nine Inch okay. Nails. I, I think thought, Nine Inch Nails is pretty great. I thought he was great. saying towing the line. Towing the line. Like, like uh, you know, it's like the a, about the music industry and like they uh, they got fucking toe the line. Yeah. That's like a different song. Diplomatic and shit. Right. Just set, setting the standard for all other yeah. industrial artists out there. <laughs> I think Nine Inch Nails is pretty kick ass. I agree. I, I agree. If it wasn't for Nine Inch Nails, you'd never have Marilyn Manson. I was basically just making yeah. an excuse for mishearing 
the fucking title of the song. It's right. Like, it's in the title. The, to- the title is terrible lie, but I'm still thinking he's saying telling a lie. Maybe it's one of those things where they, he tries to fool you. you yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. He's definitely not saying telling a lie though. No, uh, yeah, he's no. Ta- terrible. Lie. He was pretty evil. Yeah. Like he's, he's lying. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a brand new one though. And if, Go you, ahead. if you don't mind in, indulging me for a moment. Um, so the song California love by Dr. Dre and Tupac. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Tupac that's a good and song. Dr. Dre. And I, and I, I'm not going to sit here and sing the whole song for you, but I hope there's not. a lo- California love. Oh, <laughs> is that the weird Al version? <laughs> no. Hey, that's the real version. I, uh, he, there's that's a, the version there's I a I line where he know. said, uh, he says the actual lyric is, or I, I might even fuck this up, but it's put up a finger. If you feel the same way, we're mm-hmm. throwing it down for California. If you listen close, it sounds like he says, pull my finger if you feel the same way. <laughs> it could be. And I was like, what? You both yeah. have to fart? That's yeah. odd. I but- mean, that would be a good idea. Right. You pull your, you pull mine, I'll pull yours. Yeah, that's right. Dr. That's, Dre's got to throw a dad joke together. right at the end of it. And that way it's like, oh, my, one of you might like have a real stinky fart and the other one is like not so bad, but it's like, you don't know who's who's. So it's like, ah, oh, we're, we're together on this. We're just gonna <laughs> fucking deal with it as buddies. And and you're both pointing at each other at the end of it. So you're just like, wasn't me? Yeah, that's right. Which oh, is that's another good. great song. It what? wasn't me I, by Shaggy. Oh, yeah, I hate that song. You know, in life, sometimes <laughs> yeah, I actually fucking everywhere. hate that song too. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Sometimes in life, you you won't you'll hear a song and it goes away forever. And then it comes back and then you hear it all the time. Like I've heard that song third. That's a good. You want to have a shaggy on? It wasn't dude? me. It wasn't me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty perfect. I, uh, thank you. Uh, would you mind writing that down? And then I picture, it and then me? I and then I and then I get like uh I don't know. I feel like he shouldn't have been cheating on that girl. No. It makes me mad. On it the just counter. makes me mad. Here's the thing though, Shaggy wasn't the one doing the cheating. It was the guy who was singing. Shaggy was just doing the He wasn't yeah. cheating. And then the guy was like, uh, oh, did you find me on a counter or yeah. whatever? I don't know where they were having yeah, sex. Yeah, he's like, and picture stuff, this. But... We were both buck naked banging yeah, on the yeah, bathroom yeah. floor. You can't say it. I'm like, oh, sounds like a porno. That's cool. Gross. <laughs> That's cool. Right. Gross. You Plus, ever, how are you, you going to say? You ever banged on the bathroom floor? No. Hmm. Well, really? Hmm. Not on the. No. I banged on the bathroom floor. Hmm. You banged on pee, dude. <sighs> on pee? There's you like, just pissing all over your bathroom or something? On pee particles. or Pete? P. Oh, I thought you had like a friend named Pete and you were just like, ah, move over, buddy. Oh, yeah, like you don't want to move? All right, well, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Hey, could you lay real flat for this me for a few minutes? This is now a threesome. <laughs> no, there's pee particles, dude. Yeah, that's Any true. bathroom, yeah. there's oh, splash. Yeah. There's I'm gonna, oh, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some shit right now that you may not want to hear. There's probably pee particles just on your body. True. That's also true. You flush your toilet, it's just like shooting pee particles Your everywhere. cell phone's covered in pee particles. Covered bro. in pee. Yours specifically, <laughs> just just mine. Yeah, just the way you treat it. Did you want to steal it? Still, not now. Oh. Not after I put this UV light over it. It's looking fucked up. Like Chris Hansen. <laughs> Does he do that? No, he just gets pedophiles. Yeah, Ugh. which I think that it's. It, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. That's this, a nice callback. This way. may be a little bit of a controversial opinion. I'm gonna say something right now. I think pedophilia is real bad. Oh man. Hey, you know it's so funny. We addressed that in the intro of the show before you guys showed up. <laughs> that's that's we, good. I said I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I don't understand it and that I think it's terrible and it's it might be bad. the worst thing. It could easily be the worst it thing. It could be the worst. It's what there's there's some things that are real bad, but that's definitely there's there's nothing that's much worse. Yeah. And kind of going back to the, uh, to bring it around one more time, going back to like the um, growing up and, and you have the strict set of rules. It's like that shit can backfire. And, you know, with certain pedophiles out there, it seems there might be some trends. And it's just like, whoa, let's because change the like subject. What do you say? It's getting a little dark. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, yeah, dark. You know? I don't like that. I don't, no. no I, let's neither. go back to the P thing. Yeah, that's way better. Do you guys have any songs about P on the new record? We don't. No, <laughs> no. no. But uh, but we would consider that for the next record, very briefly, and then disregard it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> put, it, put it on the board, and then not look at that part yeah. of the board, and, and then not, er, and then not attach it. the string to that one. <laughs> exactly. Just let it hang yeah. down. Dangle. Well, there's no piece of yarn going through it, so fuck it. No, like you said, I, I've uh, you guys have put out a couple of a uh, couple of the tracks, as the kids call it. Yeah, and they are very different. Uh, different. Uh, like the first record, you can go all the way through it, and it's kind of this, it's not the same, but it, it's kind of it flows in the same kind of like right. it's going to be this punk rock. You're going to be on fucking ten the whole time. Yeah. And this new stuff, it's 
it's got that punk rock element, but it's a little more rock and roll. And I mean rock and yeah. roll in like the way of like, I don't know how to say it. Not like ACDC rock and roll, but like, uh, fuck, what am I thinking of here? Well, ACDC is a good one. It's you, riffy. Yeah, it's kind of riffy. Yeah, that's cool. right. Yeah, there, that's right. Riffy. There's more. There's a little bit more riffiness to it. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a little bit more rock and roll. Like if you could picture like a slider between like punk and rock, it's like more than halfway towards the rock. All right. A you know progression. I mean? Oh, like those little, uh, what are those things you play with when you're a kid? An you abacus? Put, yeah, and move the abacus a little bit over more into the... <laughs> yeah. So, like, there's definitely, like, you know, there's nothing we could ever do, I don't think, we would or would want to do that would not, you know, make it a, a sort of punk rock record, but it's definitely, there's a lot more going on. And the think. music video production... Is something else, right? Yeah, that new one, man. We it's, had a real good time with that one. All yeah. of my love video was amazing. Nope. John Mark was the director on that. And he was a he was a real cool dude to work with. Yeah, let that me was ask a you this. Wonderful time. It's it got was that it was Vaseline a, lens on yeah, it. It's where a it's like a beautiful video. How, thank you. How long did that take to shoot? We shot it in two days. Really? Uh, okay, yeah. I figured it was a lot longer. Than no, that. it was a two day shoot. I mean, they were intense days, but yeah. it was yeah. it was so cool. Everybody on the crew was amazing. Like all the girls were so pretty, and we were trying yeah. to talk to them, and they were being pretty nice. You know, they would talk to us for a little bit, yeah, right. tolerating, yeah, and then get but, back on their phones. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, okay, their piss covered phones. It was yeah. nice though. But we and then we would have like catered lunch, so like we would be like, now the girls gotta talk to us because we're all sitting down at the <laughs> on table, the same spot, right? Yeah. So it was nice. That was nice. Very cool. I'm trying to think of any wrap up questions, man. We got to We got to go here in a second, but I think oh, we hit it we? all. Man. I think we do. I was gonna say. The new song "Slap," as the kids say. Oh yeah, they are they, saying that. They aren't slap, they? man. I don't get. I that. heard that. I they, heard oh, that from uh, yeah somebody else. Like that's what they're saying. I'm just trying to be slap. relevant. It's yeah, slap. It's, it's slap. so weird. Well, before "Slap," I heard it fucks. Which Ooh. that's way oh. worse. I know. I think yeah. that's why they changed. It. Like, hey, pump the brakes yeah, on you that. You can't say that. In that school. sounds like something that like a yeah. like a like a high powered executive says. Yeah. Like this fucks. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds fucks. fucks. He's like lighting a cigar with a hundred dollar yeah. bill. Hey, he yeah. just yeah. the new Ariana Grande. Yeah. It fucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like so worried about getting me too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because. <laughs> All those CEOs, they're like worried about shit. Yeah, they're shitheads. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. They have a spotted past. Yeah, they that's they how you get to be <laughs> in that spotted position. Spotted past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So people can look you guys up on Spotify. <laughs> Absolutely. You have a website, I'm sure. Do, do yeah, bands have websites Tudor, anymore? Masktintutorband.com. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, Mask and Tutor on Facebook. Mask and Tutor one on Twitter. There was some motherfucker that parked us. We, we, we got parked, yeah. dude. And we're not even... We don't want shit. We, bo- boys podcast was taken and I looked and it was zero followers, zero tweets. The same with mass intruder. Whack. Just I'm like, just don't be a metal backstage dickhead and give me the fucking handle. What man. Come asshole, on. Right. Well, and, uh, and mass intruder on Instagram. Yeah. You know, fuck Google it. Just find it. That's right. Yeah. Find it. Look it up. But we're don't be such a loser. All that stuff. Look up pictures of us and stuff and see what we got to say. It's yeah, good. listen, get the new record. I th- I'm fucking proud of it. Good. Yeah. We're Hell fucking yeah. proud of it. That's real talk. Very cool. Well, we'll get you guys next time you come through. Thank you for coming by so much. Absolutely. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having us. And we'll see you next week. Bye. All right.